What's up, everybody? We're back again. It's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. No, it's not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, let me start over. You should leave that in there. All right, you, you ready? Get a they drop too while we're here. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> That's the members only. All right, here we go. What's up, everybody? We're back again. It's another episode of the Dad Bod Golf Pod. Good job. It's, I got it right this time. <laughs> it's Kyle and Ben, and we're ready to get after it. Recording live yeah. here from Bunkers in Auburn, Alabama. 50 parking spots right underneath the building. It's yeah, spectacular. I, don't think a lot of, I know they see the parking sign that they've put up here on the side of the building. Yeah. I don't think you understand how many spaces you got. To you can't park, park there. anywhere next to the building downtown Auburn. You can park right underneath. Well, you this one. can, but you've got to pay for it. Exactly, Here it's free, free, free parking right underneath the building. But before we talk more about that, we got to give a shout out to Bet Online, the number one sports betting website in the country. Ben, I don't think you've heard this yet. I haven't. Use coupon code Believe. It's not a fifty percent welcome bonus anymore. It's a free bet, up to two hundred and fifty dollars. So I don't know how that works. Okay, so your fifty percent bonus is a free bet now. Okay. Instead of just free money to play with, it's a free bet. So up to $250, you can make a bet with no risk whatsoever. So you get that money, you can bet it with no risk, up to $250. Huh. Uh, so go ahead, get you that $250 bonus, put it on that 16 parlay and win about a billion dollars. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> do what you got to do. You got it. Use coupon code, code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, on your, fifth, your first deposit. Not yep. your fifth, your first deposit, uh, and you can get that free bet up to two hundred fifty dollars. So check them out. You got all kind of sports you can bet on, and then you got the free. I'm uh, not the free. You got the online casino uh, as well. I'm not sure if you can use the two hundred fifty dollar bet. I don't think you can. One hand of blackjack. It's probably got to be a sports roll bet. Roll those dice. Yeah. Just put it on black and roll that roulette table. I do Just have a quick sh- story, real quick, about you mentioned the sixteen team parlay. Oh dear. There, it wasn't me. There's a buddy of mine. This was. This was before bet on. This was before it was thought of. This was back in the late nineties. Yeah, this he is was, when it was illegal. It did well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but he he put a bet on. It was like an eight or a ten team parlay. Yeah, just a two dollar bet. Did his. The most I've ever hit is an eight team parlay. I have a hundred percent. I've hit an eight team parlay. It was two dollars to How win. win? Two dollars to win, like two hundred fifty dollars. Oh yeah, he went like twelve hundred bucks. I think I was picking a lot of money lines, if I remember correctly. Oh. So it was. Uh, wasn't it super oh, no, he cra- was going like straight underdog. Oh, like, across the board, yeah. yeah. Just well, the board. So, but you can do that. You can do that at Bet yeah. Online. It's where the game starts. All right, Ben, we 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 struggled a little bit over what to talk about tonight. There's a reason, and there's a reason why it was tough. It's because non-elevated PGA Tour events are awful. No, they suck. And and, and no disrespect. I mean, it's. It just is what it is. It's just really hard to watch. I mean, even golf, if you're a golf purist, which Ben is way more of a golf fan. watching guy. Fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. Ben's a golf watching <laughs> guy. Okay? And I'm and I'm like, I'm a golf watching guy, but. But you're not allowed to do it like I am. Like, let me, yeah. like, it, Kyle and I have talked about it. Like, I, I, I work early morning, so, I mean, I'm done a little after lunch. And so, on Thursdays and Fridays, my wife and kids are not home because of school, and, and she has, like, a job that makes her work till 5. So <laughs> I sit around, and I'll watch golf for basically yeah. three hours on every Thursday and Friday. Well, then that usually, if there's something that's of interest, it carries over into Saturday. And then, of course, the final round Sunday, I'm always going to watch. Yeah. So I told Kyle this weekend, I may have watched nine holes total it's just the entire weekend. And you and here's the kicker. I didn't even tell you this. Well, I did it in a text. Wife well, and kids were out of town, so I had all the time in the world sitting. You watching could have golf. watched every hole. <laughs> yeah, and never heard it one remark not. about, "Hey, Dad, are we going to watch Netflix?" Hey, Dad, are we guys, can we watch this movie? None of that. Yeah. I had the entire week, and they didn't come back until Monday. So I even had Sunday that I could have watched golf all day. And you chose not. And to. chose not to. Yeah. That's what did you choose to do instead? I ended up binge watching uh, the Bear, that guy that does the. the uh, have you heard about that on Hulu? <laughs> I've heard about this, but I, I don't know much about it. I don't want to go into like a whole <laughs> diatribe about what the bear is, but I have heard. Is it good? Yeah, it is pretty good. Okay. It, actually, that first episode, I'll tell you this. If you watch it, yeah, it's kind of unnerving. I don't like a lot of conflict. There's a lot of screaming and yelling and stuff. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm, I was almost out, and then I said, okay, I'll stick with it. It got better. The bear on Hulu. Send the there check. You go. Send the check. <laughs> it, so, 
So Ben Can punted. Can you imagine I watched a cooking you, show instead of you watching punted, golf? You punted on golf yeah. because the field was so bad, and I put bad in quotation marks, bad from a star power Yeah, no Scotty, no JT. I mean, you did have Ricky, but he wasn't in contention. Um, a lot of the other guys that are popular were not in contention. Uh, Akshay Vatil was a guy, you know a guy that apparently won it two years ago, um, was in contention, but I didn't even know Wikipedia that. Wikipedia doesn't even know that. No, they had to. They literally had to start <laughs> saying his name over and over and over. And then, of course, you you said it best before we came on. You know, they did the gimmick of getting a 16 or a 14 year old kid to come out there. I almost Miles made Garrett, the cut, and he didn't make the cut. Shipley. It, I guess that Shipley was almost won. That was the storyline. <laughs> Shipley, it's his first tournament since turning pro and earned himself a pass into the John Deere next week. So Yeah, he had a top ten. So yeah, so that's probably the storyline. Shipley, yeah. just because he's been so popular with college golf yeah. and an amateur with the Masters, playing with Tiger, low am at the Masters, low am uh, back at the U.S. Open as well. well he's tied. had a pretty good run. Low, yeah, he's had a good run. And Until he, he fa- other than facing J.M. Butler, he's had a pretty good run. Yep. He had a pretty good run. Um, he but got it. Was, it. No, it wasn't top ten. He was top twenty. He finished tied, okay. tied okay. T twenty, but still he was a top, top twenty five finish. He was tied for sixth at some point in time yes. on Sunday because I saw it. Yeah, the, he the, went. It the went thirty five seconds. The thirty five seconds that I watched this weekend. His, his putter that? failed him on the final day. Ah. He, yeah, he went south. Yeah, you had uh, Miles Garrett. Garrett. Miles Garrett, fifteen years old. You bring a fifteen year old into the tournament, which. I mean, he's good enough. No, he is. He's great. He I shot mean, even par, his first professional event. He shot 74-70. Corn, Corn Ferry, he was like 12 under on one of the tournaments. Yeah, you're right. You're right. First PGA event, but he finished after two rounds even par, didn't make the cut. Jackson Coyvin, Auburn, freshman, outstanding. Didn't make the cut. Dude, won every single award you can possibly win. He shot the same score as Miles, if I'm not mistaken. And yes, he didn't he make the even cut. as well. He didn't make the cut. Florida State kid was the low am uh, that's real popular uh, that Auburn defeated. Actually, Coyman beat him, but um, but he didn't make money because he's keeping his amateur status. So uh, loser. That was yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, when he was when he was in contention, you and I have had this discussion. Can you call your agent like when you're when you're done on the course? No, you got. <laughs> I've, I've, I've asked this question. You got to declare. You got to the declare. Dang There's it. no take backs. Oh. Once you're in, you're in as yeah. an amateur. He was the one that was top ten finish. He was actually oh, that hurts. he had a chance to going into the back nine, he had a chance to win it. And, I guess and you blew it. In the current format, you have to have these type events because otherwise these type guys will never get into an elevated event, but gosh almighty, it's so tough. They're gonna have to get a larger purse so they can draw more people though, Kyle, because it just those names they're just on not Sunday. Though. When you require when you require the other events, it's just not going to happen. Like Br- Bryson DeChambeau was the headliner for this tournament because he was sponsored by Rocket Mortgage, if I'm not mistaken. He was Before, there. Yeah, yeah he, he was. was at this event like every year, but now he can't play there. That's the only reason Ricky's there. They've got to figure this merger thing out. Yeah, because Liv was off. They could have easily played in this tournament to, to try to secure some points and and couldn't because the merger still hasn't happened. So it's got to happen. to for The, it, the it, only other thing they can do, this is the only other thing they can do in my opinion, I don't know the correct number of years that it needs to be, but there needs to be a rule that says you have to play in every single event over – X amount of years. So, in other words, I get it. You have to play the Honda once in, I don't know, five years, six years. Yes. Of, of of you having your car, you have to play the John Deere Classic. They have to do something like that that says to keep your card, you have to play in this event, these events at least once over a five or six year. Because what is it when you span. get your card? Just six year. I have no idea. Six year card, I think. When you get your card, I think you still have to finish in, like, the top whatever or you'd lose it, like, the very next year. No, you, I think you get at least, like, a two-year exemption. I think it's minimum two. But it's still, like, the status thing where you – But you, still, in that two years, you're right. It ought to be a thing that you got to sign a contract that says in these two years, this is how many tournaments you have you have to play in. Yeah, like, now, I just Now, with don't that said, they need to do exactly what Pat Perez had suggested – 
and they need to help some of these young guys that don't have any money out travel-wise. In other words, if they don't make a cut, at least their expenses are covered for the week to be able to pay for the room, board, travel, all that kind of stuff. They do make a cut, then they need. it's kind of like a draw. They need to use that money to pay for their stuff. Maybe so, maybe so. But regardless, man, man, oh, man. I mean, I, I, I'm so proud of guys like Cam Davis that gets to second win on the PGA Tour, yeah. Akshay Batia, who – has a chance to win, I think, his second tournament. He gets a lot of the headlines. Oh, I no, mean, he's got three wins. Three wins, so it would have been his third win. I mean, this would have been fourth win, I guess, fourth if win. he would have won. I mean, I love these guys getting opportunities, but, I mean, you just got to have Jordan Spieth. You got to have Justin Thomas. You got to have Rory. You got to have these guys. Look, we've seen this on a smaller scale before. Back when Tiger was in his heyday, if he didn't play in a tournament, the numbers were down tremendously. Yeah, and, and I'm we not, don't have that guy. And I'm not comparing JT or Rory or any of those guys to Tiger, but the group of them, the the, the group of ten that people want to see every Sunday. The, the elevated events do what they're supposed yes, to do. they do it. People they, watch them. People watch them, and they make money. And, and they're awesome. But there's a reason <laughs> these sponsors the, have said – if we don't get chosen for an elevated event the next year, we're pulling our sponsorship. And why got, would Rocket Mortgage or whatever that sponsor is? Why Rocket would Mortgage. they? Why would they want to keep doing that? I, I guarantee you, they didn't make their money. No, make their money back. No, and then it, there was a possibility of it going to a playoff, and they went ahead and said, like, they, it, if it had gone to the playoff, it's going back to Golf Channel. It wouldn't have been even televised. <laughs> that's incredible. Like that's. I'm like, you're going into extra innings in a baseball game. What do you do? Let's go throw it on MLB Network. Like, let's stop watching right here. Let's go somewhere else. We'll we'll put it on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll tweet out the winner. We'll tweet. <laughs> you guys follow us on Twitter. Hashtag, well, who's the winner? Yeah. <laughs> Get a hashtag going. That's what they have. To, no, man. I mean, it is uh, – elevated events are great, but they're killing – They're killing regular the, It was their, their, their idea to compete with – live high purses keep 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 dudes on the pga tour but i think it's strangling these these lower events the purses are going to continue to fall yeah sponsors are going to continue to pull out unless they figure out something and it's either got to be a merger or they got to come up with some type of some type of requirement to to play x amount of events over x amount of years on top of playing in your elevated events it just makes it in my opinion, it makes the live tour that much more appealing. Oh, there's no doubt. I told you the, the <laughs> weekend before, I, I spent Saturday watching the live tour just to see, you know, how Bryson was going to do and how he's going to bounce back. And when it was in Nashville, and I, I told you on the last, you know, last pod, and even, even during the week we were talking, and I said, man, I said, it was fun. Nashville showed out. So um, I, they got to figure out a way. Uh, speaking of which, our sponsor, I just got an email from BetOnline. Yeah. Election results. You bet on those. You can even bet on election <laughs> results. We're not going to go political at all. But, but still, if you want to get when in you on were that, wondering what you could, you could tie that up in a parlay, probably yeah. in that free bet. <laughs> that could be your tail end of a that parlay. Could be your ta- yeah, there you go. <laughs> Throw that in there. What a random segue. What, uh, a, what an incredibly well, it, just, it, it was buzzing me. And I got got like two of the emails, and I'm sitting there going, I go, well, that's pretty appropriate. We're sitting here doing the pot. I might as well give him a shout out. There you go. There you go. So yeah, th- something's got to be changed. Golfson, I. The PGA, I don't want to say golf. The PGA Tour is in a really, in my opinion, precarious situation because sponsorships are about, I think, are about to be an issue. I think spo- selling these, well, one these is, title sponsors. You know, Honda put a limit on there. They said, we're done after this. Yeah, they're, I mean. That Honda that was the yeah. Honda Classic. Or they were the like, PGA National. They were like, we're like, not. The Bear Trap. Like, that's a big. Yeah. They're like, we're. This, we're not an elevated event. We're going away unless we become one. Yeah, I mean, it's they got it. They got an issue. They got to figure something out, and uh, I, I'm not 100 percent sure what it is. But there's a lot of stuff going on at Bunkers, uh, and we're going to kick it to Mo. She's oh, back again. Yeah. I know you're going to be disappointed because it's not Haley with her. It's me. Which that is, it, it's a big letdown. It is a disappointment, honestly. It's going to be a disappointment, but just bear with us. She's got some good stuff to talk about, and uh, we're going to have some fun doing it. And then Ben and I'll be back. Right after that, we got some golf stuff. Our golf stuff. Yeah. I know you like us talking about PJ Tour, but our golf stuff is what you're like really, really interested. Uh, be careful saying that. But this, you, this is what us playing is what you're really interested in. So we're going to kick it to Mo and, and myself.
Yeah. I'm going to kick it to myself and Mo, and then we're going to be back to talk about some of the our latest golf escapades mm-hmm. uh, right after this. All right, we're back with Mo. I know everyone's disappointed because usually it's Haley right here the last <laughs> two weeks, but it's me. You got to deal with me uh, this week. So Glad to be back. Mo has some incredible. We have some events coming up. We you had do. A, you coined a term. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you. T- uh, the descriptor of it. I'll let you handle that. But tell us what's coming up in July. Some really cool events, uh, and I'm just gonna let you have it. Yeah. So we just got done with Kona, as y'all know. Um, and that was amazing, but Big it's, it's July 1st, so we yeah. have a brand new month ahead of us, and we have some very boozy events. Which boozy. We're re- boozy. We're some boozy events. We're really excited for them. <laughs> First, mark your calendars because July 17th is a wine tasting, mm. and we have a lot of great wines. It's themed Christmas in July oh. because... Why not? Why, Why not? not bring the party early? Why not? Why not? Why not have two oh, Christmases? That that's was a da- good. That's a that dad joke. Yeah, you coined that. That's a dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> but so that that one we have, we're really excited. There's pairings, food pairings with it. That's gonna be really exciting on June. I mean, on July 17th. Yes. And then on July 24th, the week after, we have it's National Tequila Day. National Tequila. That's a National thing. National Tequila Day is on. Jan- J- on how July, all, all the J's. How can you not love that holiday? Uh, we were like, <laughs> we are celebrating. We are doing it big and boozy for boozy. July 24th love it. Um, for National Tequila Day. So we're also going to do a tequila tasting, which we think is going to be really exciting, really fun. We're going to highlight a bunch of our very high-end tequilas. High and end. we're doing a full tour, like a tequila tour almost. So we have some professionals coming in. Oh They're wow. going to take us through it. It's going to be really, really exciting to just dive into what we have behind the bar, let you taste them, and then make a drink out of it. So it's going to be really exciting. I mean, getting to know, uh, do you have an idea of like the different, when you talk about high end, like brands or things like that, do you have an idea of like who all be included yet? Or are we still waiting to release those details? So those details are still secret yet. They, they're, they're still, still secret. secret right now. Okay. Because once we get closer, we'll, we'll, we'll release them. But for right now, awesome. just mark your calendars. Cause it's, it's going to be exciting. Awesome. So yeah. they, they killed it with the Luau this past Sunday. Uh, everybody talked about how great uh, the crowd was. The event was, they know how to put on an event. Uh, so if you want to come hang out and do a very boozy, uh, boozy event. Uh, you got the wine tasting on July 17th. Yep, and uh, then a week after. And then a week after, make it a thing. Let's yeah. make it a July thing. Come on, come to both. But weekly. Just right. come weekly. Yeah, and hang out. weekly, and we promise we will get you boozy. Get you. Honestly. <laughs> get you Get you turned. Exactly. And we, we also just changed our lounge area. So yeah. So that's been really exciting. They now face the TV, so you can just have kind of a whole party. I've noticed that. You, the, there's really good seating now. Yeah. Uh, not just in the restaurant, but you can kind of be in the lounge. You can eat, hang out, and you so don't have to. So full bar access. Like, exactly. Like, super easy. Exactly. But it's a great place to bring your friends and family just to come hang out, chill. It's super comfortable and inviting in there now. So come check out our lounge area. I love the, the ideas for the, you know, the drink specials and things like the drink events and things like that. But, gosh, the, the restaurant is what I feel like does not get enough love. Right. I, I mean, the, the, the simulators are great, and, and we, lo- we love playing in the simulators, but you guys brought us – uh, a turkey club that's just unbelievable. I mean, it's like it's huge. It's like six inches tall, yeah. and there's four. Sl- there's you could have it like you, one serving of this could probably help you for four days. You could exactly. probably eat off of it. And then, the, and then we haven't had the quesadilla yet, and the quesadilla t- was maybe the best thing I've ever had. I came down. I was like, I was like, let me surprise y'all. I'm gonna give y'all one of one of our favorite menu items. We bring it down. Like ten seconds later, it's gone. Oh, it's, we it's inhaled so it. it. It was really good. I try. I don't even normally eat steak or quesadillas, to be honest. And I tried it. <laughs> and I was like, "This is delicious. Everyone needs to have it." Yeah. So, yeah. And we've tried a- everything. So oh, that's wow. that's something that that's something that we haven't had yet. But I mean, that's just a that's just an example of yeah. like the a, array of things. Uh, and it's perfect you- dinner food. Perfect shareable Shh. food. Perfect yes. for families. Great dinner. Food. It's awesome. So yeah, great salads, everything on there. For whether you come in here for lunch or for dinner, you're right. The menu items, they're so spectacular. They're so tasty, um, and it's just exciting that we get to have great food and a great time. Yeah, I just feel like sometimes people get locked into it's a golf simulator place, right. and, for, and you don't realize how great of a restaurant mm-hmm. it actually is. Like, yeah. it's just it's unbelievable. And come so, come in and tell us your favorite menu item, and yeah. we'll highlight it. Tell us in the comments what was your, if you've <laughs> ever been here. If you've yeah. been to Bunkers, we sure if you're listening, you have. 
Where, what is your favorite menu item here? Yeah, we'd be curious. Mine is the hot honey chicken pizza. The, the, I've the heard pizza. that's so good. Oh, I think I had it the other day. It is delicious. It's, it's Absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely delicious. Doesn't it, that one comes with jalapenos on it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Y'all fresh. Try that. Fresh I've also jalapeno. heard that the chicken sandwich is really good, so we're going to have to try that next time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks again, Mo, for coming on. Uh, this is this is going to be like a weekly staple yeah. now. Yeah, love this. It's much better <laughs> than just Ben and I talking about food. You get uh, fun different personalities coming in telling you what's going on at Bunkers. So, uh, you talk can talk booze and food. Booze and food. <laughs> Boozy events and, and then food as well. So awesome. uh, thanks again, guys. Uh, thanks, thanks for having thanks, me. Thanks, Mo, for jumping on again, and uh, we'll be back right after this. All right, we're back. That was uh, myself yes. and Mo, much better looking than Me. looking this way. Yeah. Uh, talking about uh, bunkers and all the events that's going on. Check out that wine tasting, the tequila tasting, a lot of stuff. Boozy events. Oh. It's not bougie, boozy. Boozy events coming There's up. There's no chance I'm remembering that. <laughs> I know that has to do with booze. And yeah. It has to do with alcohol. But yeah, but you know what bougie is? Like yeah, it is bougie. High, it's high end. But, but it's some. Look at us. We're wearing our pink. It's bougie, man. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so we've actually played golf recently, and yeah. it's very rare. Not with, not with each other. It's very rare that we both get to play before a podcast and we can oh, talk yeah. about it. Ben played in a tournament actually today. Uh, kind of a tournament. Kind of a tournament. Tell they us about it. They had the Alabama Junior Golf. Well, I say Alabama Junior, Junior Golf Association because the kid I played was from Texas, San Antonio, Texas. Shout out Brady. I know you're not going to be watching this, but. Uh, he is uh, from San Antonio. He's uh, 14, about to be 15. This is basically for 14 years and older. Wow. Um, and so these Could kids he pipe are from it? all over. You know, honestly, he and I were about the same off the tee. And, but now his irons were absolutely dialed in. Yeah. He didn't hit it further than 20 feet away from the pin all wow. day long. What did he shoot? Remember? Um, no, because he'd get up there and he'd just like halfway putt it, and then he'd go because it was kind of a practice round for him. So like he, a pro am. He kind just of thing. was like the pros. He went ahead and threw down like, you know, fake holes and was like putting because they actually they mark them with red dots on the green, so he knew where the hole was going to be. Yeah. So, um, so he was practicing for his his rounds that are coming up, um, and uh, this is at RTJ uh, Grand National. Grand right? National at the Lake, lake course. course. Yeah. And uh, mixed tees. That's a great course, um, which I, I I did like. Um, which is kind of funny because when I played uh, over the weekend, I also mixed tees. Played the chairman's tees. Um, we'll get to that here momentarily. But mixed tees on one, of course, playing from the tips on one. Yeah. And on two, they played it regular. So I did fine there. Uh, three was regular. And then it started to get like that's when they beefed it up. Like the next one was a par five. Uh, they had us play from the tips, which Kyle can tell you, usually it's fairly easy from our tees to get kind of down a hill and have – uh, a chance at getting to the par five and two, yeah. uh, three shot hole today for sure. Um, and then uh, same thing with the next hole, which is a short par four. When you play from the regular tees, they had us tipped out, which is basically behind the green of the previous hole. Uh, next one was tipped out, another par five tipped out, then back to a 185 par three, and then they tipped out on nine as well. So. Um, those guys have got their work cut out for them, and he is. So he it sounds them, like it's probably somewhere around. Just under seven thousand yards. Yeah, sounds sounds that 68, way. Sixty eight, something like that. Yeah, probably sixty eight hundred. That's a lot of golf. That's a lot of yardage for Ben. Oh, that's yeah, all was, you want, yeah. especially when it's a hundred degrees. I had to. I had to. And that golf course is one of the. I think if you went to Death Valley. And oh. in in uh, wherever Death Valley is, you, Arizona. I'm not good with. Yes. Yes. I'm not good with you're, geography. You're good. Arizona, or Grand National. There's not a there's not ten degrees difference. You, I feel you like. want to know what makes it worse? <laughs> well, that was the thing. Is they're from San Antonio, Texas, and I said, oh, it's really hot down there. He goes, honestly, about the same. He said, this place is scorching. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And um, and it's it was car path only because they don't want us messing up the fairways. Oh, brutal. And I did not hit the cart path all day long. It was awful. Did you ever pull the whole bag off the cart? Uh, no, but I did take six clubs at one point in time across the fairway because I wasn't real sure where the ball was. Oh, um, so, that's brutal. Uh, that was the most I ever took at one time. And, and, hey, there's some spots out there where it is a long way from the cart path. Oh, yes. It is a long way from the cart path to the center of the fairway, much yes. less the other side oh, there's of no the doubt. fairway. So uh, it was great, though. I mean, it shows you how good – teenagers are i mean he's 14 years old 
I know he scored better than me, even though he wasn't really keeping score just because, as I said, he didn't hit the ball further than 20 feet away from the hole all day long. Only time he – and, and matter of fact, at one point his dad was with him and his dad threw some balls down the rough and said, you have got to hit some chips from around the green to see how it's going to react and how it's going to release and what's going to – I know you haven't missed a green yet, yeah. but <laughs> – it's just in case, yeah. just in case, um, let's start over here I in this bunker. I think I helped him, though, because he did ask me a bunch of questions like, where's my miss? Like, what, what you, know, you, do you, you know, once he found out I played there, which that's the thing is I don't belong to the club with Kyle, so that's usually where I play when I play and usually play the late course. Um, so I gave him a couple of tips on, on maybe some things to do and at least what not to do. Like, if you're going to, you know, uh, for instance, we got the three, that is a par three. And I said, they're going to put this pin back left one of these days because there was a red dot up there. I said, you cannot go long on this hole. I said, you won't be able to stop it coming back. You can be back that way. Like, you've got to – it is better for you to come up short than it is. You're dead and, and, uh, and long. So, um, he, the future's bright. He's not even – he admitted he's not one of the longest hitters. But he, with his wedges and with his irons, will – he'll he will score well if he continues to hit it the next few days the way he did it in front of us today so um that was fun now the other golf that i played i don't i don't know that i really want to talk about this kyle's real upset about i don't want to talk about this. well you got to play a nice place too but i, <laughs> I got to play shoal oh. um and it's the ultimate play in shoal because you didn't have to walk in the summer it's carts juan was our caddy was juan with us last time no but Juan, I gave him one of the Dad by Golf Pod balls that I have because he wants to listen to shout out Juan. He has got a qualifying event. He's going to Missouri yeah. here in the next couple of weeks. So uh, there's your proof, Juan. You, you made the podcast. Um, Nothing will ever top the, the time we played and the dude uh, told you you needed – when you asked how far you were into a three, par five and he said three seven irons. Yes. Nothing will ever top that. Yeah, that, that was, that's a memory. That was the – I tell, I that tell, was Walter and his son. I tell everybody I ever meet that story. <laughs> so I love I love that place. Oh, I I'm was, so yeah. It's it, it was it was bougie. You talk about bougie. Yeah. Uh, lunch was good. It was phenomenal. So um, enjoy. Was the course it. in fabulous shape. Oh, the course was spectacular. Primo. Um, it, they the greens are always spectacular. That's what gets me. Is you just don't get a bad roll on the green. Let me ask you this. So. <sighs> Oh, you're going to really appreciate this. Look, before you go, okay. before, i got to ask you this. So, three, four, five. Is five the par five? Yes. Okay. Are they going to do anything with trees there, or are they just going to leave it like it is? They're leaving it. There's nothing Or still. is that six? Three, four, five, six. No, it's three, four, five. Six, the, you, six is a par four. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Six is a tough par four. Are they just going to leave that? Because it's almost like you're playing like a traditional – Woodlined course, and then three, four, and five is almost like a. No, you're right. No, three has wood. That's the par five. It's still wooded. It's when you get to the par four, the long par four, four, five, and six. Is four, five, and about. six. Yes. It's like a link style almost. Like yeah. there's nothing. Tornado there's, came through and wiped out all those trees. They're just going to leave because Shoals a place where they could go find like a. They could go get full grown pines probably and bring it in and, and plant it. It makes me wonder if they do. You know, they've got a couple of tournaments coming up. I'd be interested to see. I did watch some old video of when Freddie Couples was playing. In the PGA Championship? Eight, the par three there. Down the hill, over the water? Yes, and there's a ton more trees in that video from six years ago than what you and I are used oh, to. Oh, that was a se- was that the senior PGA? Yes, senior yeah. PGA. And so, um, but no, my story was, so we get to, you got uh, threes the par five. If we get to four, and then we get to the tee box at five, the par three, over the water on the left can play long because they got it from the chairman so we're playing the fours okay not the tips but the fours so 185 uh downhill a little what bit. what number four uh, five four five. is the long yeah. par four so five the par three yeah 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 this is playing one he said 192 playing 180 so i pulled the five and because there's two there's two old men letting us play through i stick it to about two feet oh I got a story similar, and I can't wait to tell you, but that's. Now, it was, and that was the thing is, Juan will tell you. Juan goes, because, because Bobby says, 
oh great, we get to play. There's some guys on the toughest hole on the course because we're playing from the. And one goes, this is your time to shine. This is it. This is it, and you <laughs> and, did it. And I got to go first, and I shot. I have to ask, did you make the putt, or did you pick it up? No, they kicked it back to me. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> they That's it. awesome. You know, because we got we we drove down there and we were walking up with our putters. Bobby and I were, and the the dude kicked it back to me. He was like, "You're not putting that." Yeah, the old guy did. Get in the car. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So, you kind of hinted at it. I had a golf excursion yeah. Saturday. A, f- a good friend of mine in Atlanta, or actually Sewanee, uh, is where the club is. Invited me for the weekend, not the weekend, the day. I drove up for the day because it's only two hours. Yeah. Two hour drive. Not bad. Uh, River Club in Sewanee, Georgia. Okay. Okay. You know it's a good place when they you have to show an ID to get in the neighborhood. You're like, Uh-oh. I'm finna play some good golf. I'm about to play a good golf course. Yeah. If uh, if I got to show my ID to get in, not the golf course, the neighborhood. Yes. Uh, and then you you drive through all these just gigantic houses, and we get to the golf course. You pull oh, up. No, that could be a Georgia thing. I did that noon, and the course wasn't that great. Really? Yeah, I had to show the ID to get in there. Well, this course was great. <laughs> this course was fantastic. I know, you told me. Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not arguing with it. I'm just saying. Yeah, it was. I, I don't know if that's a Georgia thing or what. You had the, you had the tall pines. Yeah. That are limbed up. And then you got pine straw everywhere. Yeah. So it's like, it's honestly ha- kind of had an Augusta feel. Like, because even when you went into the trees, you still had a good lie because it was going to be sit up on like compact pine straw and you yeah. could you could you just had to get around trees so uh it was unbelievable and this is the coolest thing i i, I think this is this, this, this is, is spectacular this is this is equivalent to when we're done playing and we're sitting on the porch in the rocking chairs at au club betting on guys to or play. okay so you, you kind of gave me a side this is kind of a sidebar so at au club this is this is similar so we got the putting green right by the golf right by the clubhouse and when it rains we all sit up on the uh, yeah, we all sit up on the, uh, the, on the patio on the patio in the rocking yeah. chairs and we'll take like a bag of range balls and we'll bounce them off the concrete onto the putting green and it's like twenty dollar makes yeah that's like our equivalent like that's our kind of yeah. men's grill and men's this, club and this gambling is that on steroids so all right they have a signature hole at River Club it is number seventeen coincidentally uh. and it is an island green okay you have a very and it's a good it's not like a it's a good island. Like How far you could, does it play? It play the the the, the um, it's an elevated tee box. It's like 165 on the card. It probably plays about 150, 155 okay. where the pin was all in the back. This is the kicker. Okay, when you watch, look it up online. Look it up. River Club. Do the whole flybys. They have one by one whole flybys. Go to number 17. You do the flyby. You don't realize. The clubhouse because 17 is usually not quite back to the clubhouse. No, no, not at all. 17 is literally right beside the clubhouse and the tee box there the, the men's grill in the back of the locker room is literally 20 yards behind you That's and it's fantastic. and it's all glass and you look back and they're beating on the window and they're like you know they're giving you thumbs up and stuff like that they're betting on they're yes. betting on like do you hit the green or not yes yeah so there's probably I don't know it, it wasn't a ton of people, but I would say at least 15 dudes oh. lined up. You could see them on the glass. So it's kind of nerve-wracking. I mean, you got a crowd. And it's, a elev- like I said, an elevated tee shot. I had about 150 to the flag. Okay, I was going to ask how you did. we got to walk through that now. About 150. Uh, I hit it to about three feet. And, honestly, we thought it was going in. Like, it, it was – I hit a little draw, and it hit the heel – and the heel kind of fed to the hole, and it started feeding. And you could hear them getting excited yes. in the background, and uh, and it stopped. And you hear, oh. And well, you got to wonder what guy in there said, "I'll put twenty that hits in the hole." Or, or like, it, it could have been birdies. Could it yes. have been hit it in the water? Whatever. You know, or, or hundred to one, he holds out here. Yeah. And then you almost did it. No, I, and and it was. I said, oh my god, that might have a chance. <laughs> and uh, which would have been. Epic, but no, I hit a beautiful shot, hit, kind of drifted towards the flag, and then I made the putt and I turned around, took my hat off, and tipped it back up the hill to the guys. That's fantastic. And you could see him fist pumping and stuff like that. That's and fantastic. And then afterwards, like we went into the men's locker room and you actually see what they're seeing. And yep. it's literally like, I mean, you look behind us, this big screen right here, just imagine you're looking out that 
Oh, and, wow. and you're watching these dudes hit into this island green with probably a 20 or 30 foot elevation. Oh, it's fantastic. It's just, it was, it was such a fun, I told him, I told my buddy Ford Stokes that invited me, shout out Ford. Uh, he, I told him, I was like, that was, I've played a lot of golf courses and I'm not going to say River Club was like the best golf course I ever played, but it was one of the more fun experiences. Yeah. It was a hard course, but a play, but a fair and playable course. Like I like courses if, if it was wide enough off the tee to get it in play, but then you had to be really good and yeah. really precise because the greens, as a Greg Norman course, all the greens were like elevated with gigantic bunkers that were just really tough to, to get out, get up and down out of. So it was fun, man. That was one of the highlights of my sporting career. I yeah, think. that's fantastic. I think uh, to, to have, you can feel them. I couldn't imagine the nerves because I told you, they warned us when we went to Pinehurst. You know, you saw it from the yeah the open, 18th green, 18 where everybody's sitting out. That's what they're doing. They're watching you hit in and they're gambling. Okay, but on. you can see them. Yeah. Imagine knowing they're there, but behind you, watching you, and you can't see them when you're hitting. Like yeah, but it's like Johnson Wagner said when he's in the bunker. He thought he was gonna break a window or hit somebody in the head. No, like I, you see what I'm saying? I'm talking about just the crowd, like it just. Just knowing there's – just feeling that there's people behind you watching. I would sit – if I was a member of that club, I'm days that I couldn't play golf, I would sit there all day oh, long. Oh, there's no doubt. I would I sit would there sit. all day long. They'd have to carry me out in a wheelbarrow. I would sit in there with, I would my, gamble with all my, my, money my vodka soda, and I would just <laughs> sit there and I would watch you guys hit. And, like, the wife would call and she'd say, what are you doing? I'd be, I am watching this idiot try – Try to, be, try to scramble so I can get this 20 bucks. I need this guy to was, get up and down here. It was spectacular. Yeah. So uh, I, I enjoyed it. I'm playing in a tournament on Wednesday. I think I'm been, I'm this far from being back, I think. Oh, goodness. I know I've said it. Famous last word. I'm telling you, I'm close. I'm close to being back. And uh, I, I, I'm excited to play golf again. So I'm playing in a tournament on Wednesday, and then I'm trying to squeeze in as much as I can up until um, – I mean, I guess all summer. I mean, all summer. It's, it's, I played three times in the last week. My wife has told me I'm done for a bit. You might be. You might need to just go ahead and put them in the, <laughs> get them out of the truck, put them in the garage. I will say this: in eight days, I played three rounds of golf, which Kyle can tell you that is not me. I did not even want to swing tonight when I got here. My back was killing me. I told you I was like, not swinging a club. I said, bro, I'm not. No, I will. Put, we have a putting contest in the, but I'm not swinging a club. There you go. And uh, you go. and so when she said that, when she goes, okay, after three times, and I was sitting there going, I, I'm good. And she's like, I bet she's wondering, he's not even gonna fight me on this it's because I'm 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 dying. Yeah, I'm gonna take a month <laughs> off. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And hey, in the heat, man. Oh, golly. you have to. You gotta take heat time and off. Car path so. only. Yeah. But anyway, guys, we really appreciate you listening. You got to come to Bunkers. You got to check it out. Yeah. We got a family next to us playing soccer, hockey, all kind of stuff going on. I know that family, but I don't want to shout it's out not, to if they want to be known. It's not the just golf here. You got all kind of fun yeah. games, arcade games that you can play. They're playing uh, kickball next to us. And then, kickball. And then on top of that, we've already talked about the restaurant. The restaurant is just top notch. Oh, top notch. Did we even mention what we had tonight? We that did. I, I mentioned it with Mo. Okay. The quesadilla is the best thing I've ever eaten. That here. is. That, that, you they, got they pizza. Said, Let's get you something that you haven't had. Steak quesadilla. And Kyle best goes, thing I've ever had. Hadn't had the quesadilla, and I feel like I say that. I catch myself saying that almost every time I come. No, we hadn't said it in a bit because we've had some of the we've had some repeat stuff because we've we've been hungry for stuff. Like yeah. they say, what do y'all want? And we will tell them what we want because we're craving it. Yeah. However. The steak quesadilla will be on the list of what we want next time they ask. Yeah, it may be a repeat. Yeah, just it'll continue. be a repeat. So, no, no doubt. Uh, guys, we really appreciate it. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. We'll be putting up a bunch of fun content. Uh, and then catch us next week. Uh, and then, Ben, we had the interview with uh, the women's uh, Coach head, Llewellyn. Coach yes. Llewellyn, this, the women's head she talks golf about coach at, a little bit. in Alabama. I mean, at Auburn. You got your segment with yep. you do with uh, Doug Amos that we post yep. every now and then. So, a lot of stuff going on. Be sure to follow us anywhere you get a podcast, YouTube, wherever wherever you can listen. We'll be there, and uh, we'll be back again next week. So it's another episode of the Dad by Golf Pod. We're, We're always, always stroking. stroking.